Hello everyone. Hope you guys are doing really good. So the topic of today's discussion is modeling of thermal systems. Up until now, we have discussed mechanical systems. And in this category, we have discussed both the uh, translational and rotational systems. We have also discussed electrical systems where passive and active systems have been discussed alike. And then we moved on to fluidic systems. So following the logical progression, it is going to be appropriate to discuss thermal systems now. So let's start the discussion. So whenever we start a new discussion, we try to rationalize the need of it. So the question is, why do we need modeling of thermal systems? Take this heat exchanger which is a very frequently used equipment in process industry. So if we wish to identify how heat is conducted from the heating media to the process media uh, through conduction, through convection as well, and through radiation possibly, uh, we would be interested in modeling the thermal systems. We will be interested in modeling thermal systems to design better living spaces. Uh, living spaces which are comfortable as well. Comfortable both in summers and winters. Just like the one being shown over here where a passive solar system is at display. And examples can be numerous, but one last example can be how heat is taken away from CPUs and GPUs. You already know that the performance of computational devices is heavily dependent on uh, temperature management. Uh, and ideally, we wish to have the temperature maintained below a certain specific threshold. Uh, so for that reason, it would be important uh, for you to model such thermal systems in order to better handle the heat accumulated inside while processing or while doing heavy computational jobs. So on top of all these examples that we have mentioned on this slide and on previous slides, I should also emphasize that uh, not only modeling is important, uh, mathematical models would reveal the internal nature, uh, but also these models are going to be used later on to design better control schemes. And uh, we have not emphasized up until now uh, the control schemes, but uh, we wish to handle or devise better controllers to handle all such systems, these thermal systems as well as all the other systems that we have discussed so far. So mathematical modeling is going to be used as a building block for the effective control systems as well. So with this thought that we have laid the uh, rationale of uh, modeling these thermal systems, we proceed further. Initially, we will look into basic components of thermal systems. Now, the first element that we are going to start our discussion with is a basic component of thermal systems called thermal resistor. Now, the name is also suggesting that there is going to be some resistance to the flow of thermal energy. So what happens in this case is that you have this element which is going to have some specific area, let it be labeled as area A, and it is going to have some depth in it, which I'm going to label as H. Now, heat which is going to pass through this element uh, can be schematically illustrated in this fashion that it gets in here and it gets out of the system from the other side. So this is Q, which is the heat flow. Now, when, whenever there is going to be thermal energy passing through any element which is resisting the thermal flow, uh, you are going to experience a temperature which is going to be different on this side than the temperature on the other side. T2 is going to be different from T1. And that's the delta T that we are interested in. This delta T, which we can observe, by the way, using sensors, is going to be directly proportional to the heat flow passing through this resistive element. So if I remove this, con this uh, proportionality symbol, I need to add uh, a constant, and this constant is what we call uh, 
thermal resistance RT. So this RT times Q becomes equal to the delta T uh, which we are interested in. Now if I further elaborate this expression, this is going to be T1 minus T2 on this side is equal to uh, this RT can be further elaborated and this is going to be equal to H over uh, Ka times Q. Now you can obviously realize that as the depth is going to grow bigger or, or width of this element is going to grow bigger, there is going to be a greater difference in the temperature. So that, that makes sense. And uh, if the area is increased, then obviously there is going to be a lesser uh, delta T observed. Uh, uh, as far as K is concerned, this is uh, a material characteristic that we call thermal conductivity. Now, thermal conductivity is going to be different from uh, for different materials, and that's why some materials are better insulators than the others. Uh, and it depends on the material characteristics and how that particular material handles a conduction of thermal energy through that. Now, in this particular case, you have derived uh, one good expression, which is this. We're going to use this expression as one of the building blocks of the thermal energy models or, or thermal system models. Uh, and you would observe that it is quite frequently used. But this is a linear relationship, obviously. And uh, in uh, practical cases, this is just like going to be one part of the, of the model. Uh, the point that I'm trying to make in this case is that, for example, just consider that uh, uh, you have uh, a side view of this whole system once again drawn so in most of these cases you would not be interested in this t1 or this t2 you would be interested in some temperature away from this wall let it be like uh, ta over here and uh, uh, you would be interested in on the other side at uh, at some other temperature, let it be like Tb at this particular point. So what happens from this Ta all the way to T1 and what happens from T2 all the way to Tb is still needed to be uh, explored. We will see that later. Uh, but at this particular stage, this thermal resistance is just like observing what is happening through this element. And that is actually what we have modeled in a, in a linear relationship over here. So this expression that we have derived is relevant only for this case, not what is happening from point A to the surface of the wall on this side uh, or element on this side and what is happening from T2 all the way to some other point Tb. The second basic element is called thermal capacitor. Uh, and the term capacitor would indicate that it is going to potentially store energy. Uh, so you can uh, assume that you have uh, uh, some volume, let it be V. Uh, and uh, this material that uh, we have got has got a density rho corresponding to it. So volume V and density rho is associated with this, uh, with this uh, material. And what we are doing in this case is that we are pumping heat into it. So this heat, if I use a different color, gets into this material. And that is Q, which is going to start increasing the temperature of this particular material. Now, I should also write it down over there that heat is being pumped. Into this volume V. Now, in this particular case, the question is how to model this whole 
uh, phenomena. So this Q, this heat flow, is going to be uh, is going to be equal to uh, rho times volume times C times dt by dt. And rho V, when combined together, is going to be the mass, since we know that mass is equal to rho times the volume times the specific heat times dt by dt. And this C is actually the specific heat specific heat capacity to be precise of the material. Now, uh, if, if you recall, you have studied uh, that uh, this corresponds to the energy uh, uh, required to uh, raise the temperature by one Kelvin of uh, one kilogram material. So when you have that specific heat uh, multiplied with uh, uh, with the mass m, with mass uh, m re being realized in terms of uh, density multiplied with the volume, uh, this is going to transform this whole expression like this. Q is equal to uh, capital C, if I may say that, uh, D capital T over DT. And this C is actually what we call thermal capacitance. Since you know that we are making these analogies with the electrical systems, and we have seen uh, all the basic components that may be there in mechanical, electrical, electromechanical, fluidic systems. So uh, the third possibility you can expect that can be a thermal inductor. But thankfully so, there is no such element in the thermal systems. So we are not going to incorporate thermal inductor in our thermal system models and thankfully so. Since we have seen the basic components, it would be appropriate now to start discussing some example systems. So it is now time to start doing certain examples. And the very first example can be that of heating a room. Uh, and in this case, you can assume that this is a room of specific dimensions. Uh, and uh, at a central location inside the room, there is a heater. And uh, you're asked to develop a mathematical model of what is happening inside uh, of this room. So you can assume schematically that uh, heat is coming out of this heater in this fashion, that you have Q in. And heat is sneaking out of this room as well, like Q out. And remember, this is not an isolated room. Uh, uh, you, you're not uh, thermally isolating this. Uh, so actually, there is going to be a temperature measured at some far off location, uh, which is uh, labeled as T infinity. But what is happening inside the room is also very important. So I can assume that there is going to be some central location at which the temperature is needed to be known. And I'm going to assume uh, that uh, all the things are going to be at this temperature T. Or in other words, there is this equilibrium already achieved. So you're not interested in the transient state of the things. Uh, and there is no other heating element or cooling element inside the room. So assume all the things are at same temperature T. Now with this realization that heater is trying to heat the room up and things are being heated, but at the same time, heat is getting sneaked out of, the, of, of this room 
and that is going to make this whole system a bit more complex. So uh, in this particular scenario, I would start doing uh, or recalling the constituent equations. So that is going to be my first step, recall constituent equations. So the very first equation that uh, I can recall can be like you have a temperature difference, which is T minus T infinity, which is getting uh, getting sneaked out of this room, uh, equal to the thermal resistance times Q out. And we have derived this expressions earlier. Now the second constituent equation can be uh, in terms of heat flow, which is QI minus Q out to be equal to the thermal capacitance of this room times the time rate of change of temperature. Now, these are the two constituent equations. So I'm interested in using these two equations to come up with the equation of this whole setup. Uh, so I think the starting point can be equation two, so that can be taken over here, and that would mean that uh, Q in minus Q out is equal to C times time rate of change of temperature. And now I can replace this Q out uh, with equation number one. So I can place this equation right at this location. So this would mean that, uh, or should I say one would mean that QI minus this whole scenario can be rewritten as T minus T infinity over this thermal resistance R to be equal to C times D by DT of temperature. Now this would mean that uh, I can manipulate this whole expression a little bit. This would make this RQI minus T minus T infinity to be equal to RC D by DT of temperature. Now I can rewrite this whole expression and I can place this expression over here at some uh, better location. So this is going to be RQI to be equal to RC D by DT of temperature plus T minus T infinity. So this is structured according to the convention that we have followed so far that the inputs are going to be on one side and uh, outputs are, or whatever is uh, uh, being changed as a result of this input is going to be on the other side. So this expression, although it is simple, but you should not underestimate the power of it. Uh, why so? Uh, for example, I can make you see what is happening with this R. If I just see what is this R, this would take into account the wall thickness H. It is going to take into account the area, area of the room from which the heat is being sneaked out. Uh, and it is also going to be dependent on the thermal conductivity uh, K of the material that is used to construct this room. So if I'm interested in uh, uh, making this room insulated so that this heat does not escape out of this room and uh, a ma majority of the heat is used to heat up the things inside, so you would be interested in uh, maintaining the uh, wall thickness, you would be interested in uh, what is going to be the effect of uh, area or the size of the room, and you would be interested in the material used to construct these walls, uh, which are going to be having specific thermal conductivity for them. And similarly for capacitance as well, you can um, recall that it depends on uh, the row and it depends on the volume. Uh, and it depends on the specific heat, which is C. So these values can be changed to change the uh, the behavior of this of this room uh, in terms of uh, how 
uh, efficiently it can capture the heat and retain it. The time rate of change of temperature is actually, uh, um, uh, it is going to give you an idea that how temperature is changing with time uh, when you have selected all the other parameters. And similarly, for example, T infinity, we have mentioned this to be uh, uh, like a constant temperature, but sometimes, because for example, in the night, it is going to be different. In the morning, it is going to be different. Uh, and if it is not constant, you need to kind of realize that how things are uh, changing. So uh, this underlying equation and all the parameters that are hidden inside it uh, can give you better understanding of how things are structured and how this room is going to uh, allow the things to be uh, heated inside using the heater and uh, how the heat is going to be sneaked out of this room uh, into the atmosphere. The second example that we should discuss is that of instant water heater. Uh, and in this instant water heater, you are going to have a vessel. And in this ve vessel, there is going to be a tubing uh, in which the water flows. And I can say that uh, this water gets into the system uh, at this particular place with a flow rate Q. So this is water flow rate. And when it gets in there, there is going to be a temperature measured. This is Tn. And obviously it is a heater. So when water gets out, having the same flow rate Q coming out of the system, it is going to have an elevated temperature T out. So you are interested in finding out how the temperature is raised uh, of water when passing through this whole setup. But obviously you need to have some sort of heating element. And in this case, it is, a, it is an electrical water heater. And obviously for that, you are going to require electrical power to be provided to the system. So this power gets in there. And uh, this is electrical power. Which heats this water up. Now, with this realization that you have got this system uh, schematically illustrated, the next step would be to start uh, devising a way to write the dynamics equation or equation of, uh, uh, of uh, heat exchange. Now, in this particular scenario, I would suggest that we can start from energy balance equation. So energy balance equation can be written like this that you have uh, energy flow rate which is getting into the heater minus the energy flow rate getting out of the heater to be equal to the energy flow rate which is being used to increase the temperature of water. So that would be energy flow rate to increase water temperature. Now, with this realization that you have got uh, the energy flow rate required for this energy balance equation, uh, I would say that you need to kind of get back to the drawing board mm -hmm. to identify how the uh, uh, volumetric flow rate of water can be related with the energy flow rate uh, into the heater. Uh, so I would ask you, in other words, I would ask you to consider how this water flow rate, which is a volumetric flow rate, can be related with energy flow rate, and that's the question mark. I think you guys have already done it, but I would I would kind of revise it for uh, for this instance. And that was something like if you have a volumetric flow rate Q, that 
that is related to the mass flow rate when you add uh, the density in it rho q density of the fluid in this case of water in this case and that is related to the energy flow rate when you add the specific heat and the temperature alongside it so this is going to be uh, rho q and then you add uh, the specific heat capacity with the temperature uh, so for for example for the inlet it is going to be ti and for the outlet this is going to be t out so this is how you relate the volumetric flow rate with the energy flow rate and that question mark is handled over here so i'm going to kind of uh, separate this whole discussion so that you don't confuse it uh, so now in this particular scenario the very first item is energy flow rate into the heater so that would be something like uh, in this particular scenario you have uh, two elements getting into the heater one is the electrical power obviously p added with the uh, with the energy flow rate coming in from the water side and that is uh, if i just restructure it specific heat capacity times rho times q and this q is the volumetric flow rate that we have already identified for the water times the temperature of water at the inlet ti minus you have uh, energy flow rate out of the heater so we are going to assume that whatever is the electrical power getting into the electric heater it is perfectly insulated it is not getting sneaked out as was the case in the previous example so uh, in that particular scenario this is something like you have uh, uh, only the water getting out of the system sneaking the energy out of the system so this is going to be uh, specific heat of water obviously times the density of the water then the flow rate remains constant and this is going to be the outlet temperature now this is going to be equal to energy flow rate to increase the water temperature and and obviously this is because you have already assumed uh, that uh, this is a vessel this is uh, this corresponds to the energy storing element that we have already derived an expression for that was called thermal capacitor and you know the expression of it and that was uh, the capacitance the thermal capacitance and i'm going to write down like capacitance of the heater uh, times d by dt of the temperature involved now this is the expression that is kind of uh, uh, the the governing factor or governing equation of this whole setup and obviously there are assumptions as we have mentioned along the lines that uh, there is no heat getting out of the system in terms of electrical power um, efficiency is great and uh, you know that uh, the, the there is this vessel which is being modeled as the thermal capacitor so with this realization that the only thing remaining is to manipulate this whole expression up this would be something like uh, you have p plus uh, C, rho, and Q can be taken common, and you have T i minus T out uh, to be equal to uh, this C H. And by the way, I should also emphasize that C H is the uh, is the capacitance of the heater, and this small C is the specific heat capacity of water. Uh, so in this particular scenario, this is C H time d by d t of temperature. And I can uh, separate whatever is getting into the system, which is the electrical power on one side, and all the other stuff on the other side. That is going to be CH times d by dt of temperature, uh, and then you can have uh, this thing. Uh, keeping the positive sign, I'll change the order inside it. So this is going to be C rho Q times T out minus T in. And this is your governing equation. 
I should also emphasize at this particular stage that when I say the word uh, that uh, capacitance, thermal capacitance is being used, you can recall that there were uh, quite a few factors in those uh, like uh, volume and the density and all that. And similarly, when I say that uh, specific heat capacity is being used, uh, I'll write it down, the specific heat capacity. Uh, that was defined to be uh, when you raise the temperature of this material by one Kelvin of uh, one kilogram. Uh, so that is the specific value for that particular fluid. Uh, density is that for water flow is what is possible in this uh, water heater. Uh, so, in other words, you can see that uh, if if you are willing to change uh, the 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 thermal capacitance, for example, or uh, if you change a different fluid passing through this uh, uh, this fluidic heater, uh, this is going to give you different answers. And if the inlet temperature is different from the outlet temperature, uh, so that gradient is going to become also important. So you can you can kind of uh, observe quite a few internal details, or if I may say that dynamics of the system in a, in a very interesting manner by changing the parametric values. And this is exactly why we model this whole uh, set of systems, and in this case, thermal systems. So the next example that I would discuss is that of a thermometer. We will try to make a mathematical model of it. So a thermometer is going to have a mercury column in it. And this mercury column is going to be rising up or falling down depending upon the temperature. So what happens is that this uh, column is going to have uh, this uh, whole set of uh, dimensions. And uh, you are going to measure the temperature at this core which is going to be Tm, which is temperature of the mercury. So I'll label this as like you have mercury in this. Now, obviously this is a metallic material uh, and uh, the heat is going to be transferred uh, through the metallic material. So there must be some sort of resistance to the flow of heat. So that would be resistance of the mercury. All right, so but mercury is not going to be standing on its own. It is going to be housed inside a glass tubing. And that would look something like this. Now, obviously, you have uh, in this particular scenario, this glass tubing when added, uh, this whole scenario is going to be a little bit more complex now. And obviously, since this is glass, this is going to have another r resistance to it. So I'm going to label that as RG. Now, in terms of uh, the flow of heat, this is something like uh, you have heat getting into this setup. So the first phase is going to be Q1, which is going to uh, measure the temperature of the environment. And it gets into this glass tubing. So at this particular stage, there is going to be a temperature of the glass. And then further, if it gets through, there's going to be Q2 and eventually it, it reaches to the temperature of the mercury. So I'm interested in finding out Q1 and Q2 as well as how the glass tubing is going to create a barrier between the heat flow and the mercury, uh, between the temperature of the outside and the mercury in the, in the middle. Uh, and that mercury is going to have its column risen up and falling down depending upon uh, the other characteristics to show the temperature of the environment. So I need to model this whole scenario uh, using the equations that we have already der derived. So in this pursuit, I'll make two columns. I'll make one column for uh, glass tubing. And I'll make one column for mercury column. And in, in these two columns, I would further subdivide this whole scenario into rows. So I can see that there is going to be uh, a thermal resistance added to it. So this thermal 
resistor resistor is going to be modeled so I need to place that so I'll write down those expressions over here and on top of that I would have a thermal capacitor as well why so because I can see that there is a reservoir where the where, where the mercury is housed this is a reservoir so I need to model it in terms of a thermal capacitor so with this realization that I need to structure the uh, the constituent expressions in this table uh, this would make this whole job much more easier so for the glass tubing I would see that uh, there is going to be the thermal resistance and that would be model like T which is temperature of the environment minus temperature of the glass to be equal to uh, Q1 times the resistance of the glass and obviously this resistance is going to account for the uh, uh, the width of the glass tubing and the material characteristics and the area obviously and similarly for the mercury column you can write down an expression that would be something like the temperature of the glass glass tubing minus the temperature of the mercury core is going to be equal to q2 times the thermal resistance of the mercury column and that would be rm so these are the two expressions for uh, for thermal resistance uh, in terms of glass tubing and mercury column and then for the thermal capacitor you can write down the expressions as well and that would be for gla glass tubing something like this that you have q1 minus q2 to be equal to uh, the capacitance and I should label it with a subscript uh, CG which is capacitance of the glass tubing uh, times D by DT of temperature of the glass and then you can have uh, the thermal capacitance expression written down for the mercury column as well and that would be uh, only having Q2 by the way because it is uh, housing itself inside its own self uh, so that would be q2 which is equal to uh, the capacitance of the mercury column times d by dt of uh, the temperature of the mercury so now these are the two uh, columns corresponding to glass tubing and mercury column so if you uh, write down the expressions and solve them uh, making sure that you remove what temperature of the glass which should not be here in this whole set of expressions if you remove it you would find one expression and I'm going to leave it like a little exercise for you to to do because we are uh, getting short of time so the remaining expression is going to become at the end of it T to be equal to Rm Rm Cm Rg Cg times d square by dt of Tm plus Rm Cm plus Rg Cm plus Rg Cg times D by DT of Tm plus Tm. So you can see that on this side you have temperature of the of the mercury being indicated in terms of a double uh, second order differential equation and on uh, on uh, the left hand side you've got the temperature which is being measured. So this is going to be your dynamic equation which defines how the temperature of the environment is measured by this thermometer so with this we conclude our lecture today uh, you're requested to uh, perform the end of chapter exercises 
and uh, if there is any query you can always post uh, in the comments section or in the teams folder that we have already shared with the class so until next time allah hafiz